Okay, so good afternoon everybody and welcome to TU Dublin's postgraduate webinar for the Faculty of Computing, Digital and Data. My name is Gareth O'Neill and I'm the Manager for Lifelong Learning here at TU Dublin and I'm delighted that you could join us today as we explore the many opportunities that are available to further your studies at postgraduate level within our university. At TU Dublin, we pride ourselves in offering a diverse range of postgraduate courses designed to meet the needs of tomorrow's digital and data driven world. Our Faculty of Computing, Digital and Data is at the forefront of innovation, combining cutting edge research with practical industry relevant training from data science to cyber security, artificial intelligence and software development to name but a few. Our courses are crafted to empower you with the skills and knowledge demanded by today's dynamic technology landscape. Here to tell us more is Kieran O'Leary, who is the head of learning and development within the faculty. Before Karen gets started, please be advised that this webinar is being recorded for publication to our website at a later date. We hope you enjoy this event and we look forward to answering your questions uh, that you might have. Please feel free to use the chat feature um, within Teams to ask any uh, questions and we'll try and answer those for you throughout the event. Thanks a million for your attendance and it's over to you, Karen. Thanks very much, Gareth, and hello everyone. Thanks very much uh, to all of you for coming along to this afternoon's uh, webinar on our postgraduate programmes here in the Faculty of Computing, Digital and Data. I'm joined by a um, uh, number of colleagues uh, who we'll uh, introduce later when we're, we get to the Q&A session. So I'm just going to put some slides up on screen. And I should say we're also joined by some students who you'll get a chance to hear directly from as well later when we get to our Q&A. OK, so there's a picture of our Grange Gorman campus, our beautiful Grange Gorman campus. So as Gareth has said, so uh, Gareth has provided uh, the introduction. I'm going to speak for uh, maybe about 20 minutes, maybe not quite 20 minutes, and I'm going to give you an overview of all of the programmes that we have here in computing, digital and data at postgraduate level. Um, I'm not going to be able to go into a great deal of detail about each of the programmes, but I will give you a sense of what uh, each programme is about and what you might need to do in order to be eligible to apply for each of those programmes. Um, we'll then have a discussion that could go on for 20 or, or maybe more minutes, um, and that will involve all of the staff who are here in the room and the students who are here in the room as well. So if you have any questions that you'd like to put to staff or students, please do put them into the chat. You can put them into the chat at any point uh, throughout the, the period of time while I'm talking. Um, and then later when we get to the Q&A, you can ask questions directly as well if you want. But um, yeah, it's it's important that you recognise today is a good opportunity for you to ask. So please do so. So next slide. Um, first of all, TU Dublin, and you may or may not be very familiar with, uh, with TU Dublin. Uh, already some of you may have heard of our predecessor institutions, the um, Dublin Institute of Technology, Institute of Technology Blanchardstown, and Institute of Technology Tala. TU Dublin um, was formed through the merger of those organisations in 2019 as the first technological university in Ireland. Um, and we've grown over the period of time since our establishment, so that now you can see some of the statistics up on the screen here. Um, we're a university with approximately 30,000 students. We provide 18% of the graduates in STEM, and STEM might, may or may not be a term you're familiar with. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. That's very much the space that we're in, in computing, digital and data. So 18% of the graduates nationally in STEM subjects come from TU Dublin. Um, some other things to point out that may be of interest, you can see our staff student ratio of about 17 to 1. Um, and I think when we hear from our students later, we might hear a little bit about what it means to be in a class where you're uh, in a relatively small group that gets to know um, the fellow students and, and the lecturers that are there with you. And the final thing I'll point out is 800 plus collaborations with industry. And this is really a defining characteristic of TU Dublin and of the technological university sector in general that our collaborations with industry and the way that we prepare our graduates for industry and meet the needs of industry. And you'll see that when we go through some of our programs, which are developed directly with industry partners, funded in some cases in order to meet skill gaps within industry, and that those connections with industry are very, very important to us here in TU Dublin. Um, TU Dublin has, has five campuses altogether, but the, um, the three campuses on which we offer 
programs through our Faculty of Computing, Digital and Data are in uh, Grange Gorman, which is just to the north of O'Connell Street in, in Dublin city centre. Talla, which is a suburb in South Dublin, um, which is accessible through the uh, red line on the Lewis. And Blanchardstown, which is in West Dublin um, and is very accessible again through bus routes uh, out there. But as you'll see today, particularly when we talk about our part time programmes, um, a lot of our programmes are offered in, in hybrid mode, which means that you can attend online or you can attend in person or blended mode, meaning that sometimes there's online and sometimes there's uh, in person or indeed purely online. So we have part time programmes in particular that are delivered in that fashion. Postgraduate study, um, for, for those of you who are not familiar with the idea of postgraduate study, um, postgraduate study is study for people who already have a degree, um, although there are some exceptions to that, but for the most part, people who have already got a degree and want to bring their learning on to the next level. And there are a number of options at postgraduate study. And the one that people are probably most often familiar with is a master's qualification. Master's qualification here in TU Dublin is 90 credits. Um, so uh, and and usually a, a third of those credits uh, would be accounted for by a master's dissertation, which is a piece of advanced research carried out by the student uh, completing the master's course. Um, we also offer postgraduate diplomas. A postgraduate diploma you can consider, um, perhaps most easily, is the is often a master's program without the final dissertation. Um, so it's a sixty credit program and a postgraduate certificate is usually 30 credits um, and uh, it's what we consider a minor award. It's generally a part, usually the, the early part of a master's program um, that people might take just because they want to develop, say, a set of skills in a particular area. And you'll see today we have programs that match each of those particular uh, styles. Here's a picture of one of our lecture rooms. And so why study for a master's degree at all? Um, and we'll go through a number of reasons, but I think this is a useful illustration here uh, because this is the way that we define bachelor's degrees and the way do we define master's degrees. And at a bachelor's degree level, when you're doing your undergraduate program, um, what you acquire is an understanding of the theory, concepts and methods pertaining to a particular field. So you learn about a particular field. Like you learn about the field of computing or software development or mathematics or cybersecurity. So you're learning very much about that field. But a master's degree brings you on to the next level because it provides you with a systematic understanding of the knowledge that's at or informed by the forefront of a field of learning. And when we talk about the forefront of a field of learning, we're talking about the things that are happening in research at the moment, the things that are happening in development within, um, within big companies, within research laboratories and so on, so that you yourself can participate in that development. You can carry out, for example, uh, project work, assessment um, and theses uh, that really can stretch a little bit the boundary of um, your own particular area of study and bring you up to that level where you can engage with and have conversations um, and carry out work at the forefront of your field of learning. So it brings you to the next level beyond your bachelor's degree. Um, and you might want to do that because you want to advance your knowledge uh, to the forefront of the field. Um, you might want to acquire new skills in high demand fields and the programs that we're talking about today all address areas of skills gaps in Ireland and internationally that we're very much aware of the high demand that there is for graduates with um, excellent and advanced skills in areas such as cybersecurity, data science, data analytics, applied mathematics, human centred artificial intelligence um, uh, and many others that we'll see today. DevOps, uh, for example, software architecture and software development. So uh, in all of those areas, it gives you an opportunity to advance your career. You know, any opportunity you get to review, for example, salary levels, you'll see, you know, often a 10 percent or more difference in salary levels between people who, um, in general and obviously averaging across the whole population, people who have master's degrees as opposed to people who have um, undergraduate bachelor's degrees. It also gives you an opportunity to maybe pivot your career in a new direction. Um, so you might already be working in, say, a technology related field, but you want to pivot into a particular area, you know, for example, cybersecurity or data science. Um, so you might want to take your existing skill set 
and use them to bring your career in a different direction. And you might want to build your network, and particularly people who go and pursue full-time um, master's study um, and spend a great deal of time with their uh, classmates. It's a, a fabulous opportunity to, uh, to build a network, and a network that often lasts for an entire lifetime um, as, a, as you and your classmates go through your future professional careers. Um, but also, in addition to classmates, the relationship that you'll build up with your lecturers and with some of the industry partners that you might be involved with through your studies and um, can add a great deal to your career. Here's a picture of one of our computer laboratories. So who studies for master's degrees? Um, so graduates often continue their study within a year or two of uh, completing their bachelor's degrees that they go on and, and study for a master's degree. Um, but also, and a large proportion of the people who populate our degrees will be experienced professionals. So people who um, are working in the industry, working within the sector, um, and are looking to get recognition for their um, learning, are looking to push that learning on a little bit further, or again, looking to pivot into a slightly different area. And that creates a wonderful blend of experience within the, within the class group. So why study for a master's degree with us here in TU Dublin? Um, TU Dublin, as we saw from the infographic at the start, um, we're the top source of information and communications technology graduates uh, in Ireland. Uh, we produce more graduates in um, the area of ICT than any other university across the whole country. Um, the lecturers that you'll meet on the master's degrees here with us in, uh, in TU Dublin are carrying out advanced research. An awful lot of them are carrying out advanced research in their own fields of expertise, you know, whether that's data science, cybersecurity, software development, um, artificial intelligence, or any of the other areas that we're talking about. So you get to meet with people who are themselves um, carrying out the research at the forefront of the field. Um, we provide a state-of-the-art suite of master's programmes in a whole range of areas, um, including data science, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, software development, DevOps, uh, and mathematics, among others. Um, and we also provide flexibility to students to study in various different modes over different periods of time. So if you look at the programmes that we're going to talk about here today, uh, you'll see that there are programmes you can study full-time, part-time, online, in-person. You can opt for a postgraduate certificate option or a postgraduate diploma option. You can opt for a conversion option. So you might be coming from a non-computing background and looking to uh, come into computing or mathematics. Um, or you might be from a computing background and looking to re-specialise. So there's a whole range of different options available, regardless of what you're interested in. Here's another picture from our campus, our beautiful staircase at the centre of the Central Quad in Grange Gorman. So now I'm just going to take you through uh, some of our programmes. I've divided them up into, um, into different sections. Um, I'll only be able to tell you a little bit about each of our programmes, but I will tell you that little bit. And then there'll be lots of opportunities afterwards for us to go through um, questions and answers about these. So the first two programmes are these. Um, we've got the MSc in Applied Mathematics. There's a full-time programme delivered in Grange Gorman. It's a 1.5 year programme. Um, graduates of this programme have the skill set to apply mathematical and statistical modelling in an impactful way in a whole range of sectors. Um, graduates end up working in roles like data analysts, uh, biostatisticians, risk analysts, supply chain analysts, research analysts. Um, to get admission to the programme, you would need to have a 2-2 degree in um, a quantitative discipline like computing, engineering, mathematics, physics, statistics, those types of areas. Um, the programme is delivered in a blend of uh, online and on-campus um, delivery and assessment is a combination of online and in-person assessment, as well as the, the thesis project. Um, in addition, in a similar area, we've the postgraduate certificate in applied statistics. Um, this is a part-time program delivered over one year in the Grange Gorman campus. Um, graduates of this program will have a solid understanding of statistics, and they'll be skilled practitioners in the use of statistical software packages. It's a postgraduate certificate, so remember that's a, a 30 credit program, and very much focused in on developing skills. Um, students are typically working professionals who wish to um, upskill within this particular area, and classes are online um, two evenings a week, and that's supported with you know, recordings um, and additional, um, additional materials. 
Our next set of programs uh, are here. So the first of these is the MSc in Applied Data Science and Analytics. And this is a part-time program uh, which runs out of our Blanchardstown campus. Uh, it's a, a two-year program that runs fully online with live lectures, which again are recorded um, on two nights per week. And the course focuses on the knowledge and skills to select, apply, and evaluate data science and big data analytics techniques to discover knowledge that can add value to a company. So it's ideal for individuals who are working with or with access to data in a real context, um, and because that allows project work to bring real relevance into their day job. To get admission to the program or to apply, you'd need to have a 2-2 degree in computing, science, engineering, business with IT, or something similar to that. Two thirds of the students on this program are actually not uh, from a computer science background, but they come from disciplines such as science, economics, finance, pharmaceuticals, engineering, or business. There's no examinations on this program, it's all project work, and 95% of the graduates go on to work in data science and analytics. So again, a reminder that that's a fully online uh, part-time program. The next program is the MSc in Applied Cybersecurity. Um, this program is available on a full-time or part-time basis out of our Blanchardstown campus. Um, graduates of this program will have the skills and knowledge to um, secure business and personal data and work as security professionals in any um, business sector or industry sector. Um, graduates of this program are working for a whole range of different companies, um, like very high profile companies across, uh, across the country. Um, to get admission to the program, again, a 2-2 degree in computing or an equivalent qualification. And if you're studying on this full time, you'll be looking at three or four days a week um, or part time. This will be online lectures two nights per week. Uh, in addition to the MSc in Applied Cybersecurity, there's a postgraduate diploma in Applied Cybersecurity. Currently, that's open to Springboard applicants. And some of you may be available of, uh, or may be aware of Springboard. Springboard is a funding scheme. Uh, through which uh, funds are available through uh, through the state. Um, applications aren't currently open uh, on that, but um, may be available again soon. Um, and in addition, uh, various postgraduate certificates in this area are currently under development, um, and these will be offered in the next academic year. So we'd encourage you to come back and look for, uh, for those programmes. Again, the postgraduate certificate is a 30 credit qualification, postgraduate diploma, 60. And then the master's is the full 90 credit qualification. The next set of programs are the ones uh, shown here. Um, first of which is uh, the MSc in Computer Science in Advanced Software Development. Um, this is a full-time program um, and a part-time program. So full-time, the program runs for one year or 1.5 years. Um, and part-time, it runs over two years in Grange Gorman. The target audience for the program is people with an undergraduate qualification in computer science or software development at level um, a 2-1 or 2-2. Two, two. Um, uh, applicants with 2-2 would need to have some additional relevant experience as well. Um, so on this program, students will study advanced technical modules in programming, design, databases, architecture, web development, um, and acquire advanced technical knowledge and work on leading edge software development projects. Um, if you're undertaking this program full time, uh, teaching takes place Monday to Friday. There may be some classes in the evening, depending on which modules you take. Um, and if you elect to do your dissertation, the final dissertation over the summer period, then you can complete the program in 12 months. Otherwise, you would complete the dissertation in the next academic year, making it a 1.5 year program full time. Uh, for part time students, attendance is online in the evening. There are some elements on campus um, at three, on three weeks throughout the semester. There are opportunities for students to come in on campus uh, with their class and conduct their classes in that way. But attendance can be completely online with the exception of the, the final examination. Uh, related to that is the, the second program listed, which is the MSc in Computer Science Data Science. The same rules apply in terms of um, the one year versus 1.5 years and dissertation can be taken over the summer, can be studied full time, you know, with attendance Monday to Friday or part time with uh, attendance in the evening. And on this program, graduates will have the knowledge and skills to work with large amounts of raw data and extract meaningful insights from that data. 
and have the deep technical skills in areas like data management, data mining, probability, statistics, and machine learning um, to be effective in a data-related role. Um, to apply, uh, you would need to have a BSc in computer science or mathematics or some similarly numerous discipline at the grade of 2-1 or 2-2. Uh, and again, 2-2 two, two with uh, some relevant experience. Then also listed there are two postgraduate certificates, the first of which is a postgraduate certificate in data science. So remember, a 30 credit qualification. The, the postgraduate certificate in data science is a uh, one year part time program um, that deals with subjects like data wrangling, data mining, data visualization, probability and statistical inference and machine learning. Um, it's very much focused on students developing skills in the main tools, methods and techniques within the domain. So you would need to have again a 2-1 or 2-2 in an area like engineering, computing or science with relevant experience. All classes are online in the evening um, with some elements on campus. Again. The postgraduate certificate in fundamentals of data science, which is also shown there, is different to the other programs in that this is aimed at non-computing graduates. Um, who want to um, upskill in the area of data analysis and data science. So students would need to have a 2-1 or 2-2 degree in the area, uh, in the non-computing related um, discipline, um, and classes would take place in the evening, again with elements on campus. And finally on this slide, there's the master's qualifier. Um, the master's qualifier is a program designed to help students become prepared for the master's in computer science programs. So by undertaking the master's qualifier um, program, students will uh, acquire core knowledge in computing concepts that will be necessary to be eligible for entry to the MSc in um, computer science programs. And the philosophy behind that is that graduates from other disciplines, whether it's engineering or science, will have developed significant transferable skills in analysis, communications, and independent learning. And so should be in a position to quickly develop the skill set necessary to become eligible to go on to the master's in computing. It's a full time um, program which runs over one semester and students would re require an average mark of 60% um, to become eligible to progress onto the master's programs. Okay, our next slide is on uh, the three programs listed. First of which is the MSc in Human Centered Artificial Intelligence. Uh, There's a full time and part time program, so it's available in both modes from our Tala campus. Um, so on this program, students will learn how to build and apply artificial intelligence, something we know is very topical at the moment, um, but also drawing on elements of the recently approved AI Act that people may have heard of. Um, they will also learn how to deal with the societal choices that come with that. So that means dealing with all of the technical aspects of artificial intelligence, but also addressing areas such as AI trustworthiness, AI ethics, and how AI can be designed to be socially harmonious. And the course has been developed by a consortium of 10 organizations across European universities, um, European centers, and small and medium enterprises. It includes a week spent on project ideas with industry and research partners in Utrecht in the, ne in the Netherlands uh, each year. So to apply for the program, a uh, 2 degree in uh, computing or in a related discipline uh, is required. If you're completing the program full time, uh, attendance will be four days per week. Part time will be online on two evenings per week. The next program is the MSc in computing with DevOps, Development Operations, um, which is a part time program from our Tala campus run over two years. This is an ICT Skillnet subsidized program. Um, ICT Skillnet is a scheme that provides subsidy for students to study in um, programs that address um, substantial skills needs uh, in Ireland. And this is an area where there's a shortage of people with the cross-sectional skills in DevOps, as DevOps has become a preferred way um, for organizations to implement technical infrastructure and solutions. Um, so this has been developed with industry to fill those important skills gaps that we spoke about and also to give credit, academic credit to technologists working in the field. Um, it's tailored for experienced professionals and aspiring practitioners. Um, so for admission, you would require a level eight honours degree in computing or a related area. 
um, however, people with extensive industry experience may also be able to gain admission. Um, the program starts in January, and in some cases, uh, people may be advised to take on additional modules in advance to prepare for the program. Um, it's delivered online. It's a part time program delivered online two evenings per week and an initial two day session is delivered in person at the start of each year. Next program listed there is the MSc in Software Solutions Architecture. Again, this is an ICT skilled F subsidized program that runs part time from our Tala campus over two years. And this uh, program has been designed again with industry partners to give credit and potential software architects uh, the skills, theory and recognition that they need to develop within their role, with very much an emphasis on the practical application in the workplace. The course was developed by a consortium led by TU Dublin uh, with the International Association of Software Architects and the Irish Computer Society. Admission requires a level eight degree in computing or a related area. And again, people with extensive experience may also be able to gain admission. The program starts in January, as does the other Skillnet program, and the course is delivered online two evenings a week, and an initial two day session is delivered in person at the start of each year. And finally, our final set uh, of programs aren't master's programs at all. They're higher diploma programs. A higher diploma is different to a master's in that it's at level eight on our framework of qualifications, which is the same level as an undergraduate degree. Um, but the difference with a higher diploma is that it's considered postgraduate because people are expected to have a degree already when they take a higher diploma. And the purpose of the higher diploma is for them to uh, convert their skills into a different area. So we offer two very much related and similarly designed higher diploma programs in computing out of our Blanchardstown campus and Tala campus, both two years in length, both part time. Um, and it's a graduate conversion program that gives graduates from non-computing backgrounds the skills and knowledge to start a career in the IT industry. So uh, level eight qualification or in some cases level seven qualification will enable students to gain admission um, to this in non-computing uh, related disciplines or if you have a computing qualification but it's more than five years old and um, you can also apply for admission and um, the courses are pr predominantly delivered online but there are some on campus uh, elements to the programs as well okay so that's our set of programs um, and apologies i think i took slightly more than the 20 minutes uh, that i said i'd take it was about 25 minutes hopefully i've been able to keep your attention um, for that time um, and what I'd like to do now is just address any questions that people might have. So would anyone like to ask a question or add a question into the chat? Well, what I might do then is I might ask our students uh, who are here present um, if they would like to uh, if they would like to say anything. Um, so. Uh, Savi, um, I see that you've turned on uh, your camera and uh, Ritwick is also here with us as well. And uh, Martina is also here with us as well. So if you wouldn't mind joining us on camera, uh, if that's OK. Um, and Martina, if you're able to join us as well. Um, so uh, what I might just ask you to do, uh, and first of all, thanks very much to our three students uh, for joining us here today. Um, so what I might just ask our, our students to do is, is just give us a couple of sentences about their own experience uh, of studying on our, our master's programmes here with us in uh, computing, digital and data in TU Dublin. Uh, so Martina, you appear first on my screen, so I'll go to you first if that's OK. Hi, thank you very much, Karen. So um, as Karen said, I'm, I'm actually a student here at the moment. I'm doing my master's part time in applied cybersecurity and the reason why I kind of went to TU Dublin is because I started off actually doing my undergraduate in um, IT, the Institute of Technology in Tala. And I've been in the industry a long time. So I got my qualification and I've been working in the IT industry. And um, I'm actually being made redundant from my job. So it kind of left me at a bit of a kind of crossroads. So I decided to, you know, I'm going to go back to university. and. I actually have an interest in cybersecurity, so I'm doing my. I kind of wanted to go back and do my masters in that. And um, TU is brilliant for that because, and the thing I like about it is because 
I am doing applied cybersecurity. So I think the key word there is actually applied, is that you're actually getting a lot of experience, hands-on experience. It's not just theory. You're actually going out into the world. And that's what I learned when I started off in Todd. I went out into the world with the practical skill set as well as the theoretical knowledge. So it is, it is a very interesting course. It's intense and it's a lot of hard work. You do have to put the work into it, especially doing it part time and you're working during the day as well. It can be, it is hard work, but you know, I will say you get you get out of it what you put into it. So if you put the effort in, you know, you will it does pay off. So um I'm nearly at the end of my first year. So I've one more year to go, hopefully. But yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Martina. Um, that's, uh, that's great to, to hear that. Uh, so thank you. Um, Ritwick, um, I'll go to you next, if that's OK, please. You're next on my screen here. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so right now uh, I'm Ritwick and I'm doing my uh, master's in applied cybersecurity course from TU Dublin Blanchardstown. And it's a full time course, so it's just for one year. And uh, like as Martina said, the course, the, the keyword is applied for sure and uh, the course is defined in such a way that the projects are very practical uh, like me being from industry as well like i have around 3 years of experience uh, i just wanted to explore different fields of cyber security that's why i opted for this course at tud but the best thing that i liked here was uh, in our class we only had 20 students to one pro professor so that ratio is really great you get to interact with professors you uh, like you have an option to uh, have a bond with the professor so that you can network with them you can network with the other uh, people in the industry along with that uh, one more thing that we uh, had in our first semester that we got an opportunity to to visit a specific it industry like we went to an office we saw how the it professional works the in specific to cyber security and we also like in the college itself we had events related to ctf events which uh, encourage the students to um, work more towards it. So these are the best thing that we have seen till now in TUD. Yeah, so the experience has been really good in the last six months. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Rubik. And you might have a chance in a minute to explain to us what a CTF event is. Um, so thanks very much oh, for, sure. that, for that. And um, uh, oh, Josby, please, uh, if you'd like to tell us a bit about your experience. Sure. Um, am I audible? Uh, yeah, I can, can you hear, hear you. Me? Absolutely. Okay, yes, okay. lovely. Share. Yeah, um, lovely. So uh, I'm currently a student at TUD Tala uh, or the Human Centered AI course, which is um, running in like a one year and like a part time capacity. So I'm currently in the full time uh, batch, which is for one year. Uh, what I found really, I was actually, I have been a part of the AI space for about five, six years now. And the reason I wanted to like get my master's and actually like uh, build a, 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 a academic uh, realm there was because uh, i realized that the way the speed at which this space is moving is too fast and you know you need you need to catch up um, and what i found um, at the tud course was that it was uh, very intersectional it had elements of you know industry it had elements of academia and most of all it was also focusing on you know things which are not just coding centric not just you know like eth uh, ethical and philosophy centric it had like a very holistic understanding of what we are trying to do here in terms of you know building responsible ai and um, yeah this these were some of the things that i found very interesting and um, ha having come here like in january i realized that the uh, in person experience is amazing because you know you have the really really uh, talented and, and like you know determined professors like keith like rajesh you know they're they're there for you at whenever you have questions no matter how dumb they sound and also, you know, there's like a whole community of people you can lean on because the TUD campuses are just like, you know, so easily accessible across the city. And uh, yeah, uh, I've been really enjoying the course so far. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much, um, Ojaspi and Ritwick and Martina, uh, all three of you for um, speaking so well about your experience here. Um, so I would like to open it up. If any of our attendees today have any questions, you can feel free to ask your questions now. Um, we do have a number of staff here in the room with us. 
as well, who might be able to answer some of your questions. Okay. Some questions came through via the chat, Kieran, and I've addressed uh, many of them, which are oh, admissions type questions. Um, but there was one uh, person in particular looking for information in relation to PhD programs. I did post the link to our graduate research school um, within the chat. But if uh, this particular student has a specific question to answer, I don't know if you'd be in a position to uh, to, to ask, I should say, I don't know if you'd be in a position to answer, Kieran. Um, certainly. So, uh, well, I, I might open it up to colleagues if, if colleagues would like to make any comment about um, students who wish to apply to, to study for a PhD with us. Um, uh, hello. Uh, Hi. Marcus. Yeah. Marcus, go for it. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello. Uh, yeah, we can sorry, hear you. Am I interrupted? <clears throat> OK, um, go, go yeah, in relation to the PhD side, I mean, there's obviously multiple ro roads to, to get there. Um, uh, a PhD is always around a project, so um, either it, it it is a funded project or it's a project that is proposed by the student, which um, is probably a little bit more challenging unless the student has experience and may, may become some industry. So my recommendation is to keep an eye out for um, for funded PhD um, projects that are there, but of course, depending on where you know where you're coming from, if you're an existing student of TU Dublin, then uh, this maybe becomes a little bit easier because there's funding opportunities to come out of an undergraduate program um, um, that can be that can be accessed, you know, through through um, maybe your supervisor in your final year, or if you want to just talk to uh, various lectures that you know and um, voice that you want to carry out a PhD then that's of course possible. So there's lots of options. Thanks very much, uh, Marcus. Christina, I there know was, you're on screen. Is there anything you wanted to add? Um, there was yeah. one question yeah. about the two, sorry, oh. Christina, one question about the differences between the two data science masters. Um, the um, um, I'm program chair of the uh, Applied Data Science and Analytics Masters, um, so I can probably more talk about that than the other. Um, but one of the differences that ours is fully online and has been since 2010, and so a long time now. Uh, it's very project focused. Uh, also, our student cohort is slightly different as far as I know. Our average age is 38, so we would have quite a lot of mature students. And that are in the midst of their um, professional career. Um, it's all very project focused, allowing students to bring in their own expertise. So if you're an engineer, then you maybe have more engineering problems that you want to solve from a data science point of view, of course. Um, and if you're maybe more on the business side, business IT, um, or, or um, we have a lot of a lot of students coming from the financial side financial auditing and um, so th they of course come with a different um, a different need and our the masters in applied data science and analytics allows you to to follow that maybe um, quite freely yeah i'm the program Thanks, chair for i'm trying yeah yeah, for the for the MSc in uh, we're in the School of Computer Science, so the MSc in Data Science, and I, I suppose in some ways it's quite difficult to see what what the difference is. Maybe it's um, the the Data Science degree is more is broader, you know, focusing on the whole um, cycle. I would say we can be fully online. We are. Um, uh, most students do it fully online, as as Kieran said. We offer a blended approach for three weeks. Um, and students make the choice on whether they come in or not on those if they want some of the on site experience, but it can be fully online apart from a few exams at the end of each um, semester. Also, our cohort would be it's actually a quite rich cohort in that many people are, have been in, data, in the data science area for a long time, so they come in just to get the qualification. So they would be very experienced in a variety of roles. But we also have, as Kira mentioned there, um, a, a qualifier as such that comes through. So we've a, a lot of people that are new into it. So the mix between you know people coming in from other industries with those people who have been in the area. Um, for a long time is is a really nice um, mix within it. Thanks very much, uh, Marcus and Andrea, for your responses there. Um, Christina, I know you were uh, about to address the PhD question earlier. If you'd like to, back to that. I was, I, I was. I was just going to add a little. So Marcus did cover most of that. So 
Um, if it's a full time PhD you're looking to do, typically they are funded. There are individual awards that you can apply for um, and you usually need support from an academic in an eligible institution. So you need to contact us uh, and we'd work together to, to apply for individual awards. Sometimes you will have principal investigators that have projects that have been funded and have PhD positions and they will be advertised on our website and on various other channels so you can apply through to those and if it's a part-time PhD and um, they're often self-funded by the students so usually it's a case where the student is working full-time in industry and will then uh, self-fund the PhD. Typically, the way that works is that you would um, connect with an academic that's working in an area that's interesting to you, and then you would work together on a proposal, and then we would apply to the Graduate Research School for that. Um, and then if that's approved, you would get a letter of offer. Uh, so, yeah, so I suppose there's lots of different uh, ways in which you can do a PhD with us. Thanks very much, uh, Christina. And I know um, some of my colleagues have also put information into the chat on how you could pursue, uh, say, a PhD in mathematics or in other areas. So thanks to colleagues for doing that. Um, Gareth, you have your hand up there. I do. It's just to address one of the questions that came in via the chat. One of our guests has asked if there are any specific undergraduate courses required for admission to the MSc in Human Centered Artificial Intelligence course. Sean is on screen here. You might be able to take that, Sean. Yeah, um, you, you kind of addressed it already, Kieran. So if you if you have a degree in computing or uh, from a numerous discipline, uh, um, that that's okay. So we take it on a case by case basis. So um, yeah, so we we have students uh, that have studied uh, different uh, engineering, uh, computing, mathematics, uh, and so on. So it's open it's open to uh, students with a numer coming from a numerous uh, discipline. Um, probably can. Uh, what we're having in May, we're having a number of webinars uh, on on, the, on that particular master's program and the other master's programs uh, that are uh, running on the Tala campus. Um, so I might put them in in the chat, and uh, you're very welcome uh, to come along. So the MSc Human Centered AI uh, webinar is on the 29th of May, so it's a little bit away, and it's in the evening time, so uh, so it won't affect any if you're working or that uh, from 7 to 7.30. So it'd be a great opportunity to meet the programme coordinator as well as uh, some of the programme team as well. So if you want to ask very specific, detailed uh, questions on the programme, um, you know, the how it runs, the, the research project and so on, uh, uh, it's a great opportunity to do that. Um, uh, the, we do also have uh, two professional uh, masters, uh, which uh, Kieran mentioned. Uh, one is the MSc in Computing with DevOps and the uh, Software Solutions Architecture uh, Masters program. And again, uh, in May, on the 22nd of May, we, we have a webinar set up for that as well. So if you want to get, again to meet the program team and you have specific questions uh, uh, on that, uh, you're very, very welcome uh, to come along to that. Uh, again, just on the HCM Masters or the Human Centered AI Masters, uh, that starts in September uh, in of, of 2024. The other MSCs uh, running um, here, they uh, start in January, but of course you have to get in your application in a little bit earlier than that. But just that uh, one is a September intake and one uh, the MSC in DevOps and uh, the solution, software solutions architecture, it's a January intake. So January 2025 is when we have the, uh, the next uh, group of students in. So if it's OK, I'll put them in, in, uh, in, uh, in the chat. And as I said, you're very, very welcome uh, to come along. And I have to apologise because Sean had sent me the links to those, and I was no, you're okay, the presentation today, and I forgot to. I, so I've actually just put them in the chat there now, Sean. And, oh, thank um, you. I appreciate uh, that. Maybe yeah. Gareth, uh, Gareth, we might be able to follow up with an email afterwards to everyone just with those links because uh, yeah, yeah, Sean and his colleagues are putting on webinars specifically focused on the human centered AI and the yeah. DevOps and Software Solutions Architecture Masters. So uh, yeah, certainly encourage people to attend those. To be a great opportunity to talk specifically about those programs. Yeah. And again, we I, uh, one of our, one of our students uh, talked to you about the HCM Masters. We try and get one or two uh, students uh, to to uh, attend that as well, so you can ask uh, uh, particular questions how they are finding it. Okay, thank you. Right.
Thanks very much, Sean. Um, some of the other questions, Gareth, I think you've dealt with the costs associated with all MSc courses. Um, they're up on the website. Uh, yeah, and words. in the chat, I've actually uh, uploaded a copy of the postgraduate brochure, um, which lists all of the postgraduate offerings that we have in TU Dublin and the associated costs for each of our courses. OK, great. And all MSc and PhD programmes are on the, the website, so people can apply for all of our programmes through the website um, as well. That was a, a question there. That's uh, OK. And um, just, yeah, just looking down to see if there's any further questions. Uh, so what's the difference in the course focus? I, I think Marcus and Andrea kind of dealt with that and um, you know that th th there are two excellent programs you know in the area of data analytics and data science and um, so I think combined they provide lots of uh, opportunities for students to study in those areas and really really high demand um, area so it's it's a, a way of achieving capacity and I think both uh, programs offer students excellent opportunities to get the, the skill sets and um, that they need and the career path I think again uh, has been dealt with, you know, a, a great opportunity for people to get into all of those roles associated with um, with data science and data analytics um, and machine learning. So, um, yeah, certainly excellent opportunities. Um, Catherine uh, has a question specifically for Andrea. Um, are the list of modules subject to change each year, Andrea? Um, no, the only ones that really change, I'm just going to put in a link to any of our stuff there. Um, the only ones that really change would be the option modules. Um, of course, if we need to a program review, that's different. But the core modules would stay the same. Then the option modules, you have a list of modules that you can choose. You have 10 credits that you can choose. And we've new ones coming on board there all the time. But that would be up to you. That's totally your choice, whether what you take there. But um, they will adjust based on the industry changing new technologies coming on on board. But other than that, they stay the same as what you see in in that link there. OK, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Andrea, for that. Um, anyone else? Any further questions? We have a couple of minutes left. Happy to take any more questions. Um, sorry, can I talk? Yes, yeah, yeah, oh, please do. Oh, yeah. OK. Uh, so do you have uh, masters like um, that integrates both uh, business and technology, like especially maybe like business and um, cloud computing or business with uh, something, uh, you know, do you have such masters? I, I suppose there's a, an organizational or business element to, to lots of our programs, but would anyone specifically like to like to take that? Any colleagues? Um, I can take it. <laughs> so we have plans for um, cybersecurity management, but we don't have anything yet. However, our cybersecurity masters does have, um, I wouldn't say it's focused on business, but there's certainly large parts of it that would look at the cybersecurity um, and how it relates to business and business continuity management, disaster recovery um, and, you know, all of the kind of business resilience stuff, risk management and so on. So I would still class it as a technical master's. However, we do certainly look at um, the business side of things. Thanks, uh, Christina. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. Fiona, um, I know you, you've made several very helpful comments here um, in the in the chat. Would, would you like to just mention, because I suppose the question about data analytics specifically came up, just how do mathematics yeah. degrees? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, um, Marcus and Andrea, who, who've already spoken, th there would be certainly some crossover. So while they cover, certainly cover statistics um, on their programs and vice versa, we cover obviously our programs have a lot of statistics and a lot of people and we do focus on the programming element of it as well. I would say that we go deeper into the statistics and it's not as 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 uh, you know, we're not so concerned with how that data gets onto our desktop. <laughs> we care much more about what we do with the data when it's on there. So certainly the data science and data analytics are, are broader from that perspective. But we will go um, deeper into the mathematics and the MSc um, or MSc in applied mathematics is very much focused on the modeling element. So most modeling involves the use of data. So again, there is a 
quite a strong uh, data analytics, data science focus on the programs in the MSc, if you take the statistical route. So that there is a lot of crossover. I know there's been questions about, you know, exactly for each program, what career do you end up in? I would say that all of the programs that we offer in, in, in this faculty, it's a huge range that people can end up in. And there's a lot of crossover. And we often have people who move from school to school. So they might do, uh, you know, the MSc in data, or, uh, you know, a, a postgraduate certificate in uh, data science, and then the following year do the one in applied statistics. So we see students uh, moving back and forth quite a bit between the schools and ultimately the careers that people are ending in the you know the stem careers uh th there is no doubt about it there is some crossover not across the board but for 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 some of them i see marcus maybe want to come in there um no uh, very valid points fiona and um, maybe just you know undertaking and kieran um started with this earlier undertaking a master's is, is a big commitment and they're not easy masters programs because you know they need to be tough because you need to learn something. Um, so I would maybe recommend you to find a master's program that, of course, you have an interest. But if there is overlaps, for example, in the data science, find one that suits you from an environment point of view. Like, for example, um, maybe you, you you like having physical lectures uh, and you like to be on campus sometimes. Um, or maybe you, you do really well in exams and you prefer an exam environment rather than just fully 100% continuous assessed and so on. So definitely look at these softer points as well. Um, from, from a content point of view, you know, we're all very experienced and we're putting programs together that um, that um, put you into contention or maybe even in the lead when you're going to interviews. Um, you know, in, in all of our master's programs, the majority of our graduates work in um, in the discipline that they're that they're studying um, or studied, uh, whether that's AI or data science or uh, or maths, um, in in our I think it's over 90, 95 percent work in data science or related in, 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 in from our master. So um, I think the softer points maybe are as important because if if they don't fit you and suit you, then there's a higher chance you you're not completing the master's program. So definitely have a look at. And, and think about that too, what type of learner you are. Yeah, I would definitely support that. I think Marcus has very valid points and, and there is a huge, a huge range of uh, there's hybrid, high flex, there's a fully online, there's online come in for exams, there's 100 percent CA, there's the, there's a huge range out there. So the best thing is to get in contact with us um, at, at Sean, I know, is arranging a specific webinar and we're looking hopefully to do that as well. But just contact us directly. We can answer very, very specific questions or even arrange a time to speak with you individually to help you maybe decide the best way for you, as Marcus says, that you should pursue this because it is not a it, it's a serious undertaking, but we're there to support and help you succeed. But but that all important decision about what you decide to study initially is, is an important one that you put a bit of time into. So um, we're here to answer questions. Um, I see something in there. Uh, there actually, it wasn't covered earlier question if, if there's a part time in mathematics. I would say it's it's not part time for the MSc in applied mathematics, but it is very, very flexible. So it is a mix of um, online classes. You come onto the campus for some uh, on campus delivery four times a semester. So it, it, it's it's one and a half years. So it's two semesters of sort of your taught modules and then a, a thesis. So if you mean from the perspective of part time, is it is it possible to study in a flexible way? Yes, it is part time. Can you do it over two or three years? No, it's not. It, it's over one and a half years, but it is very, very flexible in how we deliver. I hope that helps. Uh, Catherine, I think it is. That's great. Thanks very much. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I was just saying that does help. Thanks a million. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Fiona. As well, um, okay. Um, does anyone have have any final comments that they'd like to make, or final question that anyone would like to ask? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, hi. Uh, uh, I graduate as a me uh, mechatronic engineering in ITV in Blanchetown, and then I did my master, and I love to do. Uh, 
PhD, uh, if it's possible, and I did my master in information technology management. So I don't know if it's if is there any any courses uh, suit suit for me. Uh, I will be appreciated. Hey, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Rebar, for your question. Um, I, I think I'd refer you back to the answers that we got earlier from Marcus and, and Christina in terms of pursuing a PhD um, qualification. You know, PhD qualification is, is achieved following the completion of a project, and that kind of requires, in the first instance, maybe that you form a, a connection or, or identify a project in partnership with a lecturer. So it might be a matter of looking, you know, through. Um, the TU Dublin website to look at the different researchers and what their research interests are and make a direct contact with a, a researcher who you think is in an area that you're interested in pursuing a, a PhD in. Um, so uh, th there's lots of information up on the TU Dublin website. If you go to tudublin.ie slash research and then within there go into postgraduate research, you should find a lot of direction there on how to follow up on that. Um, so thanks very much for, for your question. Um, I'd like to thank the students who were here today as well. Um, so I know you only got to speak once, but it was really, really helpful from each of you. So thanks to Ritwick, to Martina and to Ojasvi. Um, and thanks to all my colleagues as well for coming along. Um, Gareth, I'll hand back to you. You're the, the organiser today. So um, thanks very much for, for thanks, putting William. the session together. OK, and just to reiterate, uh, Kieran's thanks to all staff, colleagues and students and indeed the guests who took the time out uh, from your busy days to attend and learn more about the postgraduate offerings um, in TU Dublin. If you've got any queries that relate to any of our postgraduate courses, please feel free to reach out to us in Lifelong Learning. Um, our email address is pgcourses at tudublin.ie. And if you've got a query that relates specifically to an application that's already been submitted, please reach out to us on pgadmissions at tudublin.ie. Well, once again, thanks a million to everybody for their attendance today, and we wish you the best of luck uh, for the coming academic term. Thank you.